Hope everybody's doing well. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I in, Funny, Arsenal Roy, that you're here, because uh, I, I wanted to mention Heroclix and what's going on over there in the, in the Heroclix world. Because there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Uh, if you somehow are <laughs> are unfamiliar, uh, Heroclix, if you haven't seen me play, it's been a while since we've done Heroclix content on these streams, but Heroclix is a game of mainly superheroes, some other stuff too, mainly DC and Marvel, well, <laughs> these days, mainly Marvel, but um, miniature combat, you've got your dial that has your information, uh, the stats, they change as you fight, as they take damage. Uh, you'll see these little colored boxes inside on the stats, and those correspond to powers. And you got a nice, cool chart of all the powers and special abilities the figures have. And this is separate from the rule book. And every so often, so WizKids has been doing this game now for. What are we in year 17? How long is... Right, because we had the 15th anniversary... It was a couple years ago already? Crazy. Something like that. Yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, we're going to come up on 20 years here pretty soon. But um, WizKids... WizKids is fairly slow to change the rules. I mean, looking back over the years, there have been rules changed, but, um, you know, for a game that's been around for around 17 years like not 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 that much has changed I, I suppose you could say uh <laughs> well a lot of big changes are coming <laughs> they've announced that so looking forward this year or well the next few months at least um there's a another marvel set coming out soon soon uh soon in quotation marks because that's you know how things go these days in pandemic world but soon there's another marvel set the fantastic four future foundation set uh is coming out and expect to see some previews and unboxings of that real real soon very soon is all i will say uh and that's you know standard stuff marvel fantastic four which they've done a lot of fantastic four content lately because uh, they're making up for lost time. Fantastic Four was off the table, you might say. Unavailable for a few years. Uh, but it's back. Lots of products coming out for that. So Fantastic Four Future Foundation is coming. And then there's a Wonder Woman set coming out in a couple months. few months. Something like that. I don't know the exact dates for any of these things. Sorry. Uh, along with Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman looks to... The set itself, like the the characters and the the miniatures they've shown off so far in 3D renders, they look fantastic. Uh, we're getting, obviously, multiple versions of Wonder Woman, uh, different versions. Wonder Woman enemies, Wonder Woman allies. Uh, yeah, just like a ton of, a ton of cool characters. Um, a bunch of other ladies that have fought with, with Wonder Woman over the years. Um, we're getting new... Some new Lantern figures that I'm very excited about. We've got Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Uh, they've shown there's, we're going to get an, an updated version of this piece, Wonder Woman as a Star Sapphire. Um, yeah, just a bunch of really cool stuff. I'm very excited for the Wonder Woman set uh, as far as the figures go. Uh, and they've also decided that with Wonder Woman, we're getting a rules update. And from... The from the previews they've released, a pretty substantial rules update. Yeah, it's a lot. Oh yeah, the uh, so they they just previewed some new figures today for from Wonder Woman. The only thing that bothers me, uh, and this this has been a, I don't know if we've talked much about. So, who is this? Well, in modern times, this is the character known as Shazam. Now, originally, this character was known as Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, you say? That's a Marvel character. Well, it's a long story. A long legal story. But, yes, this was the first Captain Marvel. And then when this comic went into... 
just was not being printed and this character wasn't really being used. Marvel snatched up the name, used it on theirs. Then both companies had a Captain Marvel and legal things ensued and whether Marvel would be on the cover and then in the book, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, sometimes this character is still referred to as Captain Marvel in the comic books, which is kind of cool, uh, but, but usually Shazam now. And yes, that has sadly affected the other characters within his orbit. So the character who was once Mary Marvel is now Mary Shazam, which is just goofy as all as all get out. So I don't I don't love that. But but what are you gonna do? Things change. There are lawyers. Lawyers exist, and uh, you gotta watch out for those things. But yeah, I mean the arguably one of the defining features of HeroClix was. Action tokens and pushing damage, <laughs> arguably. So essentially, a figure figure's got a bunch of abilities. A fi figures have basic abilities in the game. When it's your turn, you can give your figure an action to move or to make an attack. Certain powers will let you do both, etc., etc., etc. So the idea for a very long time is you would give. When it's your turn, you would give a character an action to move. You would put an action token next to or underneath that figure. Move on to the next player. When it comes back to your turn, you have the choice. Ooh, do I push that character to act again, thus getting a second token, and then after that action resolves, I actually have to hurt that figure? Or do I let the figure rest this turn, not do anything, and I clear the action tokens, so on the following turn, the figure can act. Um, again, there's other nuance and other times. So essentially, you're, you're adding a tactical element, deciding when it's worthwhile to hurt your own figure a little bit, to possibly disrupt your enemy's plans, uh, knock out a figure that could otherwise possibly hurt you. Sometimes you want to push your figure to get onto a certain set of powers or abilities or something. There are lots of... There's a lot. <laughs> a lot to deal with uh, pushing damage. Um, in more modern hero clicks, they added... Actually, in all three of these figures have it. They added a special symbol. So there are a lot of ways in hero clicks to get around taking pushing damage. There's a power that can be on the dial. There's this little symbol with the, the stripe across the, the shield... Uh, there are team abilities, lots of ways of getting of getting around pushing damage. And so what HeroClix WizKids has decided is that from the new Wonder Woman set going forward, pushing damage is not a thing anymore. And it sounds minor, but it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty huge change to the game. It instantly makes a lot of figures sort of on the same playing field. It instantly makes a lot of old figures much better. Uh, yeah, and that's not the only thing they're changing. Other things are going to get reworked. They've decided that... So this is the biggest bar to entry when it comes to Heroclix. Because the idea is... Yeah, oh yeah. Like As Arsenal Roy says... Uh, you can just like just fight, fight, fight. Like you're gonna get all your figures into the battle much quicker. You're not gonna have to move up and then clear before you can move up again. And it's yeah, the the tempo of games is gonna increase drastically. And so you know inevitably people figure all this stuff out and what the meta will be and you know all that kind of stuff. But this was a a fairly a fairly decent bar to entry because you would tell you would show you know potential players oh you know look you. You know, this is, this is how it works. And then you'd say, okay, so all these colors correspond to powers, right? And here's the chart. So go home and memorize all these and then come back and we'll play. Now, again, looking at something like this compared to something like, say, Warhammer, eh, it's, you know, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> but it is a lot, especially for new players. So... What WizKids has decided to do, another very controversial thing, is they're not, at least not yet, they're not removing any powers 
although they've kind of hinted that they might. They're reworking... We know that they are going to rework some powers. Uh, they're definitely reworking willpower because it used to let you ignore pushing damage. So that got a, a change. But essentially what they're doing is that for given sets that come out, they're just going to ignore a bunch of powers and just pretend like they don't exist. Which is an interesting tactic. So for instance, in the Wonder Woman set, we will see no hypersonic speed. We will see no shape change. Um, so they, they gave a whole list. I don't I don't necessarily hate this idea. Um, fig certain figures are still going to have special powers and traits that are going to let them do technically game-breaking things anyway. Um, there'll be access to things that are like those powers, even if those specific powers aren't in there. Of course, long-time players, as you might expect, are decrying this is the end of the world, the end of the game. The game will be unplayable. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of wild, the reaction, <laughs> honestly. I mean, you know, games change. They update. There are different editions that focus on different things. We don't know the full extent of the rules changes. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of previews for that set yet. So, I mean, I just want to tell people, like, g give it a chance. Let's, let's. Let's wait and see how it goes. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's not... What I always what I always want to tell people, and hopefully help them understand, exactly, Rabbit Wombat, and just, just like with Warhammer, uh, the company is not coming into your home and smashing up your old figures. You will have them forever. If you want to, you can play this current edition with your friends at home. You could... Yeah. You know, the, there are other things you can do. It's not going to ruin your life if this game gets a new edition. And, it, and at the end of the day, if they make a new edition and it helps new players come into the game and it expands the fan base and it lets the company print a bunch more figures, isn't that really better for all of us? So, yeah, it's one of those things like I just... I, I want people to wait and see the full extent, and what we're going to get. And we don't know yet. I mean, WizKids just came out with another article this morning clarifying some things from from this week, showing off some new things, talking about stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about the no pushing damage to try it out. I've been playing Heroclix for a long time. Arsenal Roy 2K has as well. And, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're going to be able to bust out some old figures that otherwise we would never think of playing again. And like, well, hey, now, now they're viable. So that's that's exciting. Uh, so yeah, I'll talk more about Heroclix in the coming weeks um, as certain, I don't know, certain previews and unboxings come out for certain games. We'll see. But, um, but yeah. Uh, this also, this rules change does bring the main game in line more with the WWE side slash integrated game. So the WWE Hero Clicks, you can play them on their own, and it's technically a slightly different game, or you can play them with all the other figures, which is cool. But in the WWE Hero Clicks, there also was not pushing damage. So some people, some very canny people thought that might be a, an indication of what was to come for the main game, and lo and behold, they were right. So yeah. Wonder Woman stuff coming in the near future. Uh, Fantastic Four Future Foundation Quadruple F uh, coming much sooner. Let's see. What's next? Oh, and I will say that uh, as we were talking about on the Discord a little bit, if you are at all interested in hero clicks. A couple months from now is going to be a great time to learn. You're going to have rules that have been streamlined and simplified more than anything we've seen in a decade. Everybody's going to be learning these new rules, so you're going to be on even footing with a lot of people. It's going to be a really cool new Wonder Woman set to get to try them out. So we'll talk more.
we got a new we got a package come in from a company called Green Stuff World. I'm sure some of you hobby maniacs know from that company. I got some stuff. My wife got some stuff. It's very exciting. She got a few of these. If any of you are familiar with these, so this there are all of these products out there to make your own textures on things. And so what you do is, it's going to be kind of hard to see this, but essentially you make you make up your own putty or clay, you make it relatively flat, and then you use this roller to roll a texture onto it. These are these things are super cool. And this company has a whole bunch of different ones. So the idea is essentially you so you're making a, a texture mat and then you can cut it up and what most people use this for is making bases for their figures. So you have a whole bunch of in this case this is the cobble it's called cobblestone. And when you do this on a flat surface it looks like a bunch of stones. And then you can, like I said, cut that up and put it on the bases of your figures, um, and then you know, paint it and do all the rest. So these are these are here actually. They're called oh textured rolling pins. And yeah, look, at, I mean the designs on these are just awesome. A lot of like generic stuff that could be for any game. Some that are very specifically um, like Warhammer. <laughs> And some that are like other things that exist out there. Whereas, oh yeah, I mean they, they just straight up call that one Tau. <laughs> sure. A Necronic Eldar. The alien one is really neat. It has designs that are that look like they're from the the movie Alien or Aliens. So yeah, these are uh, these are super cool. Lots of texture, lots of interesting things. So yeah, so you might, you might see some of these things uh, make their way into soap designs. Who knows? You never know. They also like they're just like fun things to hold and to feel. Like the the texture is so interesting. It's cool. I'm I'm very impressed by these things. So yes, she got some of those to play with. I got Master Medium, or as they call it, Medium Maestro. So you know, I'm in my never-ending quest to make cool paint. Um, this is a specific formulation that they use for mixing up, oh hey Ernest, uh, for mixing up paints and Stuff technically for airbrushes, but you can use it for anything. So I'll see how this works with uh, with my pigments. And then speaking of pigments, I got a set of, or a trio of their pigments. So a purple, a blue, that's a little bit diff different color than the blue that we already have. And then a pink, which unfortunately has had a little bit of an accident in this bag, so I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> but, but one day, one day soon. But yeah, these are pigments like I've been using. Um, I think I've been having a lot of fun playing with them and trying different mediums, which I'm really excited about this. So yeah, I thought I'd grab a couple more, a couple more colors, maybe a little bit cheaper than the ones that we've been using. Uh, what else did this come with? It came with a color wheel, so I actually have one I can wave around. Again, if my pink is somewhere in here, opposite, all that, all that fun stuff. Oh, and then they gave us an ad for Earth Pigments. Again, this company has some really incredible, especially a line of paints. And they have all these crazy pigments that you can use to do weathering, to do terrain. I mean, it's just, it's just wild. They have all. They have really cool technical paints too. Oh yeah, color shift. Yeah, they have a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, they have technical stuff. So there's one that's essentially it's this fluid that when you take it out and and apply it, it turns into what looks like a spider web. That's pretty wild. So yeah, 
check out Green Stuff World. Unfortunately, I the only downside is I I had a couple other things that I was trying to order and they weren't they weren't in stock, despite what the website said. So that was that was a little bit of a bummer. But what are you gonna do? Uh, and they are where are they where are they located? They're in Europe somewhere. Spain. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, so shipping took a little while, uh, not not too long. Despite pandemic and them being in Spain, it didn't take too long to get the to get our box. Oh, and the box itself, the package, it's it's a uh, white cardboard, and there's all these really cool designs on the box, so you can color it. It's like a coloring book box. So yeah, kids are very excited about that. So. An even further added bonus. Okay, um, I'm going to continue with my Blackstone Fortress building. Getting close to being done. And um, yeah, it's fun. I can turn off my brain a little bit. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly exhausted today. Up way too late last night working on things... Uh, things with deadlines. Yeah, there are... You know, it's easy to get into this hobby with the painting stuff and just look at... Just look at Games Workshop, Citadel Paints, uh, and then an Army Painter. Like, that. that's the stuff you'll usually see in stores. Maybe Vallejo. I really like Vallejo Paints. We've talked about, we've talked about those before. Uh, but once once you move beyond that, there's all there are a lot of companies that make really really cool stuff out there. Again, Green Stuff World is one of them. There's Scale Seventy Five, which is also out of Spain. I think that's another Spanish company. Uh, they too have just a bunch of really rad paints. And things for your paints. So definitely, you know, expand your horizons. Check out and see what all what all there is out there. So with these Beastie Boys, it looks like I've got some some degree of options. You have a limited number of parts, it just you can decide how you want to put them together. So we've got four sets of legs, parts 19 and 20, and then four sets of arms, or uh, torsos, I suppose, uh, and then you can mix and match a little bit, so that's fun. Yeah, I was, oh my god, I don't think I got to bed last night until almost four, <laughs> and, uh, and even for as late as I've been going to bed lately, that was, that was too much. Yeah, but you can mix rabbit one, but it looks like you can mix and match though, because it says, like, yeah, it's it's the it's a limited number of parts, but you can swap between them. That's what that symbol means. So for either of these legs, you can give either one of these torsos. So I can do it one way for one sprue and the other way for the other sprue, and then there are two heads. So yeah, there's there's some degree of you'll end up. You'll end up using all the parts, but there are different ways of putting them together, essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, last night was, that was, that was rough. But, but I got a lot of stuff done. <laughs> Accomplished some very important things that I needed to finish. And, yeah, and life goes on. I was going to say that today that I don't have a lot of stuff happening, but that's not true, because here's an announcement. Um, Warhammer. Warhammer is coming back to Hyper RPG tonight, and yours truly will be on helping out. I believe it'll be 6 p.m. Pacific. Warhammer tonight on Hyper, featuring me. 
I know it's a busy time. Lots of... Uh... Oh, hey, Darrow. Thanks. I know it's a busy time. A lot of people are streaming, but if you, if you want to check that out, it should be fun. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to try. We'll see. Zach doesn't always... <laughs> Sex doesn't always take people's good advice, but we'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, so that should be cool. Got that happening. Uh, what else? What else? I do have some... Yeah, Zach is apparently going to try out Eldar. I don't know the whole backstory about how this, this has happened. I know the idea a while back was that Zach was going to try a bunch of different armies see what he liked you know isn't he so lucky that you know for so long that's true <laughs> that's true Darrow everybody knows uh, you know for so long Zach resisted even looking at Warhammer we go and collect a huge number of armies literally put it in his house and then finally he decides he's going to play and he has all of this great stuff at his disposal. <laughs> no, it's all it's all good. I guess I can just cut out all the beast stuff and then if it's all pretty much interchangeable. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I can just cut out all this stuff and then just decide how I want to put it together. Yeah, quarantine does. Yeah, hey Darrow. Um, uh, yeah, just things are things are going well. Just busy, busy, lack of sleep, kids, projects, <laughs> all the usual stuff. Try not to buy too much, too many things. Um, doing a pretty good job. Catching up on old things that I have lying around that I never got to, like this Black Zone Fortress set. So yeah, that's everything going on today. What else? What else? Next week is going to be interesting, especially next Wednesday. Did I talk about next Wednesday? I think I mentioned it. Next Wednesday is the World Read Aloud Day. Interesting program. And obviously, it encourages literacy. It encourages reading. It encourages reading out loud. Something that I'm a little bit familiar with. Uh, but there are a bunch of programs that operate through schools at least here in the u.s i don't know i mean it, it it is called world reading aloud day but i don't know what the programs are in other countries uh but anyway part of it is a program that links authors with schools and has authors well in pre-pandemic days uh, actually come in to schools or come in remotely and read to students so my schedule isn't complete for that day, but I'll be I'll be participating in this event. I'm very excited. Get to talk to some kids out there. Um, it was interesting. All of the... I signed up, basically, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. And all the responses I got were from school teachers on the East Coast. I don't know... I don't know why that was, but I thought that was... <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, is this... No, that's from the other guy. So I don't know exactly what my... Yeah, yeah, Aaron, so I'll be talking about reading, talking about reading out loud, because it's something I do a lot with my kids and with things on this on this channel, on Jessica's channel. I do a lot of reading out loud these days. Um, yeah, so that should be cool. So like I said, I don't know exactly what my schedule is going to be for that day yet. Um, my... Technically, that is Warhammer Wednesday. Ooh, maybe I'll read. I will stream at some point. It might be slightly shifted uh, if I have a, an appointment at that time in the morning. But I will be on at some point, and I will definitely read aloud. I can read, I can read some Warhammer that day. 
That'd be cool. So yeah, so that's happening mainly it's yeah, it's mainly in the morning and early afternoon. Again, just <laughs> as it happens because all the people who got back to me are on the East Coast. Hey, I, I love the East Coast. East Coast is all good. But that's not even all of that is not all that's happening on Wednesday. Because Wednesday will also be the triumphant, super exciting return of Myths and Video Games. The stream featuring me. Well, <laughs> the stream of Pete Wiz and I. Pete Wiz and me. Did I mention I'm a little bit tired? So Myths and Video Game returns for a very special Season 2 premiere episode. Even at a special time. We're going to be starting at 2 p.m. Pacific. So a little bit early. And we're going to run, I don't know, all, all day, all night. We're going to have a re... We have a... I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. We are announcing it, but I don't... We have a really cool thing planned a really fun show that we're going to be doing. Um, a, an, act, an activity, a game, a project. There are lots of different words you could use for what we're going to do. Uh, but it's going to involve everybody who's watching. You're all going to get to participate in this thing that we're going to be doing and talking about. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we're going to be... Thank you for that, Darrow. And Darrow, I appreciate your, um, how would I say, your restraint that you haven't used that horrible emote yet, <laughs> or at least I haven't, I haven't noticed it looking up. But yeah, it's and we have a special guest lined up. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be very cool, very very cool. So I, I'll talk about it more, of course, as we get closer, but. Yeah. Oh, Pete tweeted about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I, I knew that today we were going to make the big announcements. But, um, oh, well, Darrow, uh, I wish I could say I'm sad that you no longer have access to that emote, but I'm not sad. <laughs> hey, Hudsonizer. Hopefully you're having a, a good week and looking forward to a good weekend. Oh, so, yeah, I think that's... I think that's all the like the really special news I have to talk about. You know, of course I'll I'll keep everybody up to date as we move forward. Welcome, Tiny Chris. Hello. Uh, we talked about Hero Clicks for a bit. All the shenanigans going on over there, but it's good shenanigans. It's good. <laughs> Darrow, I like that one. That was not so bad. And now we're continuing on with Blackstone Fortress. We're making Beast Men. And yes, Beast Men do exist in Warhammer 40k. They're not just for fantasy anymore. Thank you so much, Tiny Chris. I appreciate your... I appreciate all the uplifting messages that you post on the Discord. Uh, yeah, despite being just completely exhausted, my Friday looks like it's going to be pretty good. Busy, but good. Always busy. Always be busy. Don't be best. <laughs> be busy. <laughs> oh, so dumb. Hey, you get any of that uh, that sweet, sweet GameStop stock? <laughs> uh, yes, Tiny Chris, that that is true. Although this is this is an, a special, advanced form of exhaustion that I have never really experienced before. It is kind of crazy though how you do start to adapt, and it I don't know. It's probably not. not it's not always for the best. People do need more than 
you know, four hours of sleep a night. Eventually, you just kind of figure it out. Yeah, beastmen have been around, uh, just not not so much lately. Yeah, that whole the whole stock market thing going on is just it's so ridiculous. And again, all the rich people are upset because it's just exposing how the whole system is rigged and people can screw with it and uh, and they lost money. Womp womp. It is pretty funny how random it was that it was <laughs> GameStop of all things. As someone was saying that it's a company that just simply should not exist in 2021. A company where you physically go to buy games, whereas, you know, all new games are just digital downloads. It was pretty funny. Uh, yep, Tiny Chris, exactly, exactly. Won't someone think of the rich people? <laughs> no. Tax the rich, eat the rich. You, you name it. If you like that slogan, eat the rich. Uh, Jessica or Jessica, Erica Ishi has a great shirt that has it on there, and all proceeds go to charity. So check that out. I haven't talked to Erica in a while. She seems to be very very busy even during the pandemic, which is great. Great to see. Yeah, there 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 have been some uh some very revealing statements made by these hedge fund people who are just outraged, outraged I tell you that <laughs> yeah, that Normal people have figured out their their game. I guess it was only a matter of time. I don't know. They've, they've been doing this for a really long time. And only now did a couple of stocks get messed with. So, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I think I've cut out all the pieces that I need. Thank you for that, Daryl. All right. I need... Well, I will need bases. But let's figure out how we're going to make some beastmen. So again, there are... Two sets of legs. Or two types of legs. And then we've got back torsos, front torsos. And again, I just don't want to... I, I think I can do it so that... I don't have any two that are exactly the same. So there are two sets of legs, two sets two sets of everything. What's the what are the permutations here? How does how does that math work? You multiply the options for one by the options of each. Is that right? So we I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Something like that. All right. So if we have one of those, with one of those, with one of those, and one of those, and then with the other one, I take one of these. 
Oh, I see. So you're always going to get... Hmm. All right. Well, we'll do we'll do simple. We won't try to make it too crazy. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So at least there'll be there'll be some variation. Big brain, yeah, I know I wish. It's uh it's a little too early for for complicated math like that. Especially on my my amount of sleep. Okay, so yeah, two of these these guys are only sticking down with one foot, so these need these peg hole bases. Yeah, this is the original Blackstone Fortress that I'm still getting around to, to building all of. And then you give, they give you a little a little terrain, a tiny little bit of terrain that just slots into that slot so you don't have a big gap in your base. Yay. And then the other two can have bases without the peg. Interesting though, look at the base, no peg, but oh, it's actually there. You can just puncture the base and you get that hole if you need it. Blood Bowl uses these types of bases with the hole so you can put the the little the ball. You can there are lots of miniatures of the ball for Blood Bowl with a little peg, and so you can put it in the base to denote who is carrying the ball. Which is pretty fun. Uh, Darrow, have you used many products or paints from Green Stuff World? I was showing off some stuff we got from there. Uh, my wife and I, we both got Green Stuff World things. Oh, cool. Yeah, they've got they've got neat stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know stocks. It's not horrible, no, but it is, it is legalized, it is gambling, and so many people involved have insider information on some level. And I always use a little bit of glue. But you want to put it where it's not going to interfere with the connections. Hello. Why isn't that? Ooh, that didn't want to fit together quite right. That's annoying. Oh, squeeze. There we go. Just need a little bit more. A little bit more squeeze. All right, that's closer. What companies caring about their workers? And we have a beast man. Rar. And these you definitely glue glue into the base, especially with that one little connecting point. You don't want that. You don't want that coming out. And then I'll put this little terrain thing in. I guess I maybe should have done that first. <laughs> Ooh, he doesn't want to stay. Oh, more glue, more glue.
you know what? I'm going to wait. Since I put that thing already in the, in the way, I'm just going to wait and do that later. And I can set it for the next one, so that'll be helpful. I don't know if I can do it one-handed. There we go. <laughs> Oh, wow, this really doesn't want to stay. Hmm. Come on, beast man. It's a farting dog. Gross. Yeah, I know. Sometimes scrolling through, scrolling through those emotes, you're like, oh, I, I never even knew I had that. <laughs> I never even knew I had that emote. They're also, I, I wish it was, I wish there was a better way to see your emotes and to search through them. Or if you could name, if you could rename your emotes so that you could search through them quicker and easier, that would be cool. They're probably like key commands and stuff that I'm not even aware of for that menu, but because I'm super old. This is just as not. Go to sleep, beast man. You're drunk. Hey, Undead Saints fan. All right. Next, next beast man. Glue this bit into the base. All right, this one is going to get the, the, I guess technically it's it's a sword. It's kind of like a cleaver made out of just a piece of sheet metal. Oh, no, um, Darrow, I meant that as a user, that if you could rename the, the emotes that you have access to in your emote menu, essentially so... Because, you know, emotes have all... The, the codes are super weird how they're named. But if you could rename it, then when you go to the emote usage window, you could, you know, find... Like, if I always use something that the person called... You know, like, even my emotes have... You know, it's got the Norse meat code in it. It's, it's that weird system. But if you could call it whatever you wanted to... I don't know. It's just a weird thought. I'm sure people would use all sorts of awful racist language and then it would cause a huge problem anyway. So probably best they don't allow that. Uh what is going on this Yeah, yeah, so these are these are beast men who just use whatever is handy to make to make their weapons and stuff. Kinda of like orcs. I should talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. Jessica and I will be doing the Warhammer War Room stream, usual time, 2 p.m. Pacific. And then there will be the Home Buddies group stream tomorrow night. It is Cameron Rice's night. And you know what that usually means. Look at how look at how awful the connection is. It just blah. There's nothing holding it in. Oh my goodness, that's awful. I didn't even know. If... Um, what is the command? I know there is one. <laughs> what is the Jessica command?
whenever Jessica's involved, there's always there's always some degree of fighting. <laughs> Ah, there we are. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, fan. You can put a little something in there, or or if you have stuff around that you're going to use for terrain anyway, you can use just put that on the base. This should start to hold. There we go. Okay. Oh, have I mentioned how much I love plastic glue? At least it's it's a little bit set. Let's see. And if it comes apart, I can fix it. Not a big deal. Hmm. Balance. All right, cool. Moving on. Yeah, so you see, so sometimes they have kind of innovative ways of putting these things together. So this one just has that, like, post right there with a, a gap underneath it. So the parts fit like that. And then you get a front piece that just slots in there. And same thing. Um, Rabbit Wombat, you could... I've seen people... If you put a tiny dab of plastic glue in there, and then and you have you have to have time for this. Oh boy, let's uh, let's say it's a ball joint, right? So you put a tiny dab of plastic glue in there, and then you just continue to move the joint. You don't let it sit in place. You keep moving it, but that glue will, or no? Um, wait, is it plastic glue? Because plastic glue will just melt into... I forget now. Shoot. Oh, or maybe it's... um. Crap, what do they use? Or is it nail polish? Maybe it's nail polish. Crap, I can't remember. But anyway, but essentially you put you put something on there and then... Oh, okay, super glue. Yeah, and then but then you just keep moving it. You don't allow it to solidify the two parts together. And then eventually it will dry just on the surfaces to add a little bit of surface buildup inside. Um, I know, like, it, however you do, I, I can't get away from it. Yeah, it made sense, man. Essentially, yeah, you're you're keeping the joint functional, but adding some material to the parts um, to make more friction in the joint. But yeah, I'm sure there are um, tutorials out there. Oh, speaking of tutorials, so I was talking about some of the, the new things we got with the Green Stuff World, etc. Uh, we also, with all the stuff that my wife does, especially with the, the soap making, uh, she's part of a bunch of, hob not hobby, but like craft people groups and things. And we were talking to one and we got some airbrushes. So sometime soon, I'll be attempting to learn how to use the airbrush. We're still gathering components. So I don't know that we have everything we need just yet. But, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Airbrushing seems cool. Seems like a lot of work, a lot of hassle, but. Maybe one day I'll even have it set up that I can do it on stream. I know I need some, some specialized things to make that happen, so I don't know how soon that'll be. You'll build me a box? Yeah, I think you should be able to do it on stream. That's what I was hoping you could do. Well, I've seen, I've seen this, uh, it's like a little case and it unfolds. To have it's the hood and walls, and then there's a vent in the back, like with a fan that pulls the stuff. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. I saw somebody doing that. 
I don't know, I mean, yeah. However, well, and also, you don't want the yeah the stuff to go everywhere. No. So anyone with airbrush advice, I would love to hear it. I've never airbrushed. Uh, I am, I am a bit daunted by it. But again, like I, I know, I know going in that there's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of cleaning and a lot of maintenance. A lot of things get clogged and stuff like that. Yeah, and then since I've seen people, yeah, do that where you do the the dots and then you can feel how the how much pressure to use to get what kind of spray, how close you need to be. Yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to all of that practice. Yeah, so we actually got two airbrushes. A his and hers, you could say. Uh, but that's because my wife's airbrush use is going to be for soaps. So the it's very specific types of materials. Essentially just micas and pigments. So body safe materials uh, that differ from the types of horrible paints and things that I'm going to be putting through it. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Does Warhammer give you super dexterous fingers? Uh, you know, I, I wish. Most dudes... <laughs> That talk about Warhammer, they've a lot of dudes have trouble with little tiny fiddly bits, especially those those among us who have larger, meatier hands and fingers. I'm usually not too bad, but I forgot to trim off. Come on, come on back out, Mister Beastman Head. Let me fix you. Almost. Oh, it's so spiky. Come on. There. No, it broke. God dang it. That's not what I wanted to happen. All right. Well, we're just going to glue that in place. I just could have done that to begin with. Just won't fit quite as well, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I, I'm not bad when it comes to manipulating fine detailed parts, thankfully. I don't usually have too much trouble, but sometimes. And again, like. Sometimes when you're dealing with models like this that just have a bunch of spikes and spines and stuff sticking out, then it can get a little tricky. I've I've definitely poked myself with things from time to time. Let's see how these guys are doing. So we have one with chain sword auto pistol. The one with the modified, or the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, not modified, improvised sword and auto pistol. One with two auto pistols. And then probably the best one, sword and chain sword. <laughs> These guys are goofy. They're going to need to dry a bit more. Oh crap, yeah, I still have, oh, I need, it got put away in a part, in a place that was a little bit out of sight, out of mind, but I still have that 3D printed Zentradi shuttle I need to work on, and I have to sand it. Rabbit Wombat, you writing sand Gundam parts made me think of that. I need to do that. 
um, I have to get something so I can do, work on it on stream because it needs a a lot of sanding. I was I used way too much green stuff, and I have a lot of sanding to do. <laughs> oh well, hello, to Undead Saints fan. Hello to your nephew, and happy birthday. I hope it is it is going well. All right, so with that done, that means that all I have left are the base set. Oh, um, let's see. Yeah, so I have the base set of Trader Guardsmen and then these weird psychic creatures, psychic dudes. What the hell are, what the, what are those called? Um, Rogue Psychers. Oh, he turned three. Okay. Oh, so you've got a little guy. Nice. Yeah, so they've got these Rogue Psychers who are really grotesque. They've got like bulbous heads. This one's got a thing growing out of him. They're actually... Oh, let me get... Is there a good picture of it on the cover? Where are they? Yeah, they're done. So you're like... They're floating in the air, and they have manacles that go down to these these big weights, and that's what's holding them down. It's pretty cool. Rabbit Wombat, they certainly look like jerks. So yeah, that's all I have left to do are those... A couple of those. I think I did one set of them already. I just have one set left. And then uh, the Trader Guardsman. And then I will actually have finished this set of miniatures. Again, playing the game. Yeah, sure. One day. <laughs> one day. Yeah, we're actually, we're coming up on my son's, Max's third birthday in a few months. So we got to figure out what, what fun and exciting things we can do for him. He's, for some reason, he, um, we've been talking about, oh, you know, you're going to, you're going to turn three soon. And he gets very upset when we start talking about that. And we say, no, no, it's a good thing. You know, we'll have, we'll have a. A party, you know, which will probably mean Zoom and just you know fun stuff for him to do here, but he he gets very upset. He does he doesn't want to he doesn't want to have a birthday for some reason. I don't know. Oh, they steal things from you. Oh, they steal dice. Okay. All right. So what can I say in total? Um, I know, right? He doesn't want. To, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get old. Hero clicks. Wonder Woman is coming. Uh, this Wonder Woman is. She's pretty cool. Look, she's got. If it will ever focus, she's got a starro on her face. Two. Is it two years ago now? There was an exclusive. Um, if you went to a tournament, I don't know if it was a prize or something. I think it was something you could buy. But they did a Starro set. So you got a giant Starro and then four Justice Leaguers with the Starro on their faces. And they play really... It, it's really fun. The So she's called Wonder Woman Starro's Minion. And they play really well together. And then this is a Star Sapphire version of Wonder Woman when she... Briefly join the Star Sapphire core. So anyway, um, Heroclix, there's a Fantastic Four Future Foundation set coming. I believe it's next month, about a month away. There will be some really cool previews for that coming very soon. I got my red red water today. This morning, anyway. Um, yeah, so like I said, look for look for some Heroclix previews. And then um, 
Like I said, I've got some fun stuff from Green Stuff World to play with. Looking forward to that. Darrow, have you been have you seen the my experiments in painting with pigments? Pigment painting. Um, I've been having a lot of fun mixing up my own paints with things. In my never-ending quest to find the perfect pink. So, here's a test. There's a test mini that's pretty, pretty darn pink. Just trying out some colors, seeing what they end up looking like. And then what's really interesting is that with contrast, uh, contrast medium and pigments, you can pretty easily make your own contrast paints. So this was just like just one coat slapped on. It's not exactly what what I'm what I want the final product to be, but it's still pretty a lot brighter pink than any of the actual contrast pinks so yeah it's fun I like it so I have I have these pigments uh, first that I got from my wife's soap stuff she used pigments in some things uh, and then I got some more stuff from green stuff world and I'm just I just mix it with whatever kind of mediums I, I want to try uh, water contrast medium uh, the what should we call it uh, why am I blanking on the word? Uh, airbrush stuff. And then, like I said, I just got this new one from Green Stuff World. So I will continue to play. <gasps> Ooh, I didn't hear about a new blue. I can't wait to check it out. So, yes. <laughs> I know one code, right? Yeah, everybody go check out whatever this new this new blue is. Exciting. All right. Here's your homework. Today, 6 p.m. Pacific, Hyper RPG, Warhammer. It's going to be an epic game. Um, I'm not going to give any details because I don't know what they've announced or what might be secret. But it's going to be cool, so check it out. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here. We're going to have the War Room stream. We're going to talk about the news, the updates, uh, the announcements, the pre-orders, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, the usual kind of thing. Jessica will be joining me, as usual. And then tomorrow night, Cameron Rice is hosting the Home Buddies group stream. There will be blood curdling of some kind or another. Uh, yeah, otherwise, that's, that's about it. Uh, otherwise, have a great weekend. And yeah, that's about all I have to say. Uh, what the, what the heck? Let's do let's do a raid. Let's raid a let's raid a big boy. They don't they don't need my help, but it'll be fun. Why not? Yes, thank you so much, Darrow, for, for hitting those commands. Uh, like I said, ooh, yum. blue pigment, interesting. Yeah, I'll check that out. Um, yeah, if, uh, if I don't see you for any of those streams, have a great weekend. Be safe. Uh, once again, happy birthday to Undead Saints fans, nephew. And uh, yeah, be, be good, everybody. We are going to raid the one, the only, the Miniac. Uh, another Scott. <laughs> there are a lot of us out there. I actually have I this I have yet to catch one of his live streams. I watch a lot of his stuff on YouTube. Uh, he's a great hobbyist, an amazing painter, um, does all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, okay, great. Uh, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. We're gonna raid Miniac. You can tell him. Check me out or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, have fun, and I'll see everybody later. Bye-bye.